Turkey's foreign ministry had harsh words for the U.S. following the release of a report by the State Department. Every year, the U.S. releases a so-called human rights report on nearly every country. But for 2022, it was particularly critical of Turkey. Ankara slammed allegations in the report as baseless, saying it contains erroneous information of unknown origin. Instead, Turkey's foreign ministry called on the U.S. to focus on its own record on human rights. The ministry condemned what it called a distorted portrayal of Turkey's fight against terrorist organizations like the PKK and FETÖ, which orchestrated the failed July 15 coup. It added that the country would never compromise on its fight to ensure national security. Ankara highlighted that the U.S. report was politically motivated and lacked objectivity. Turkey, along with many other countries, have criticized the annual reports released by the State Department, citing their inconsistency and double standards in detailing rights abuses. So does the U.S. have the moral authority to release these types of reports given its own record? And will countries take these reports seriously? And to further discuss the U.S. State Department's human rights report, joining me now from London is Javier Fahre. He is a historian and a political analyst. And Bilgehan Öztürk from Ankara he is a foreign policy researcher at SETA Foundation. A warm welcome to you both and th thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So, Javier, Turkey was very blunt in how it responded to the State Department's human rights report. It, it said Washington should look to its own record on human rights, of course, before criticizing other countries. Was this a um, fair response? Totally fair. In order for the United States to criticize other countries' human rights records, they should have to have an element of transparency in relation to their own records. The United States, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, published reports on human rights in the United States, and the conclusions are not particularly flattering for the United States. Just to give you a couple of examples, and I'm talking about key elements of human rights which the United States tend to criticize in other countries. 11 states have already passed laws, 16 bills, that limit the freedom of assembly in order to curtail the protests against racial inequalities and all that. Um, Haitian refugees are badly treated. There's a report that says that they are particularly discriminated and badly treated in refugee camps in the United States. Mm -hmm. There's 35 Muslim citizens who are arbitrarily detained in Guantanamo Bay at the moment without any charges, without any, any, any sort of um, accusations, formal accusations about their behavior. Um, refugees and migrants have been badly treated. We know that they've been mass deportations uh, during Trump, during the uh, Obama administration. But also, let's go outside um, the United States, Latin America, which is the area where I come from. Uh, between 1823 and 1994, the United States invaded Latin American countries 42 times, yes. not to mention interventions of the, of the U.S. in military coups in, for example, Guatemala in 1954 and and, and 73 in Chile. So the record is not particularly good for the U.S., and they have to really have a hard look at the mirror mm -hmm. to realize that for them to criticize all this, they have to uh, have a hard look at themselves and realize how they don't have the authority to do that. So, um, Bilgehan, the State Department's report on Turkey's uh, human rights was longer this year than the uh, previous year. So it's actually longer than of China, Russia, and Iran. So, uh, what's the was the State Department trying to be extra critical to, against Turkey this year? And what's the reasoning behind this? Well, uh, it is quite telling that uh, the fact that the sheer amount, uh, the sheer length of the report uh, on Turkey is longer than Russia, Iran and China. Uh, it's a reflection of the state of Turkish-American bilateral relations. Uh, the, the report is not just uh, deserving to be criticized, uh, because that United States record is not, is not perfect. This is not the only way to criticize it. Mm -hmm. United States does not, does not enjoy the moral high ground or the, the, or the arbiter of truth uh, position to criticize other countries. We have to, we have to treat these reports that it is, uh, it is not more than a political statement of a country with, which, has, which has its own political interests. So why it is, it is this way, it is extra long, longer than the previous years, I think it's a reflection of the state of Turkish-American relations. Mm. And it is, not, it is not perfect. It hasn't been, it hasn't per been perfect for, for almost a decade now. And I think uh, why 
the reason the reason uh, why the report is quite criticizing uh, against Turkey is uh, it is it is a way of tarnishing the image or in a way taming uh, a, a, a unabiding so to speak uh, ally into certain actions and into certain policies. So Javier, uh, China has long been a target of the uh, U.S. State Department's human rights uh, report. So in response, uh, the Chinese government is also releasing its own human rights abuses report in the United States. I mean, what do you make of this uh, and which one should we take seriously? I mean, has assessing human rights practices across the world become a political game? Yes, it's always political. I that's why when I when I try to quote human rights reports, I rather stick to independent organizations. China's record on human rights is not particularly, um, you know, good anyway. So I'm not sure they are in the position to criticize. However, and this is the reason why I always resort to Amnesty International, where I worked some time ago, and I know how thorough, how detailed, and how careful they are in the report on human rights watch, which is based in the United States. They are independent organizations that actually assess during ye throughout years and through a very detailed investigation of, of human rights, uh, how they reach their conclusions when they issue their reports. So I would, I would not really be tempted to take the Chinese report on human rights seriously. But when Amnesty International Human Rights Watch issued this report, the, uh, the, the quotes I gave you about this report is about 2022, which is very recent for Amnesty International. There are elements in many aspects of human rights which have been violated in the United States, racial equality, um, jobs, security, uh, housing, etc., which are elements of human rights. When yes. you are talking about, we're talking about different rights. So I believe that, of course, China would counterattack with their own report. But when independent organizations like Amnesty International and Human Rights criticize heavily the United States, that's what you have to take it seriously. So again, the U.S. has long been criticized of uh, turning a blind eye uh, to the rights abuses by allies like uh, Israel, India and the Philippines, although the U.S. Uh, finally acknowledged the significant rights abuses in India. Uh, it's, uh, its report on India seemed to gloss over the many abuses uh, committed in Kashmir. So does the U.S. play favorites in who it criticizes. It does, but uh, it is not in the way that it is not criticizing uh, in the reports, such as its, its favorite allies, such as Israel, uh, India, or maybe maybe certain uh, other actors too. Uh, when I checked the report, I saw similar uh, accusations or criticisms towards these allies too. Maybe maybe the tone of tone of the accusations uh, or criticisms were milder than it is directed to unfavorable uh, allies, so to speak. But uh, it, is, it is not the point. Uh, well, whatever, whatever they might say in terms of their criticism towards, towards allies, it is, not a moral, uh, it is not a moral, let's say, assessment. It is a political assessment. That is the point we must be, we must be focusing on. And the, and the much more problematic uh, point is that they, are, they play favorites, but uh, they play favorites uh, in a in a worse way, not not that they have favorable favorite state actors, but non-state actors such as you know YPG, PKK, terror group, and at the same time Gulenist terrorist organization. So when I when I checked the report uh, on Tur on Turkey, uh, the criticisms capitalize on two uh, two groups, and actually they elevate their talking points. Uh, they play into the narratives and discourses and yeah. arguments of both organization which U.S. is aligned with. That is more problematic. But uh, Bill Gehan, the report also criticized Albania uh, for closing two schools linked to the uh, FETÖ Gülen terror group. What does this tell us about the uh, U.S. perception of FETÖ, which masterminded the failed coup attempt in Turkey? That is why I said this is more problematic. So in a way, uh, United States is actually, uh, you know, is actually protecting uh, its allies or its its uh, collaborators, I, I, I think it's safe to say this because uh, until now, uh, in the in the fight between Turkey and these uh, both terrorist organization YPG and 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 Gulen's terrorist organization, uh, unfortunately, U.S. has been much more uh, on the side of on the side of uh, FETO and YPG. It, it is it is it is 
uh, obvious in their statements, it is obvious in their criticisms. And I think what you just said, their criticism towards Albania's shutting down uh, FETO schools, uh, I think it's a very good indicator of this. Yes. They, have, uh, they have a favorite in this, they have their, option, their choice is quite clear. So, Javier, uh, you, I think you have both agreed that these are politicized uh, reports, but how do these reports are impacting international organizations which are sincerely dealing with the human rights practices across the globe? I mean, are such reports downplaying those organizations' role to ensure human rights are protected? No, no, I think, I think what happens is, I mean, as I said to you, I work with Amnesty International when I left the BBC in 2009-2010. They have an independent group of people within the countries that investigate violations of human rights. Uh, you know the latest report, we were talking about Israel, one of the latest reports by both organizations, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, um, define the, the way Israel treats Palestinians as an apartheid system. They're extremely careful about how they use the language. And when they use that kind of language, it's because they've been very thorough about why they think that's the right way to define things. They have their own independent teams within the country, some of them working and you know, risking their own lives, they go through a whole a series of filters, which makes sure that when they finally issue a report, and I used to work in the press department, we used to promote that, when they finally issue those reports, they reflect accurately facts. They reflect accurately what the situation is. So in that respect, I believe that in, in terms of the, the when I, <clears throat> internationally speaking, these human rights organizations still have the upper hand in terms of the validity of mm -hmm. the reports of the issue. So I don't think that other minds, I mean, we know that obviously State Department's reports on human rights always have a lot to do with geopolitics. Yes. The Turkey has a great deal of influence in other parts of the world, in Latin America, for example, is increasing its influence. And that worries, for example, countries like the United States. So in that respect, that could be a theory that could explain why the United States has been so harsh on Turkey. That's only a theory, of course, but it would make perfect sense. So in that respect, I believe that People still rely on the independence of organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, in order to assess violations of mm -hmm. human rights. So, uh, um, if the U.S. claims to be uh, such a moral, transparent arbiter of human rights, shouldn't the uh, State Department also make an assessment of itself? Well, it would be quite ideal. It would be quite ideal, uh, but it, it is hard to expect. Uh, no one, uh, because uh, it is. Uh, indicative of how they see themselves in, in the in the in the first place, uh, writing writing these reports, coming up these coming up with these assessments, they position themselves as the uh, moral arbiter of truth, and that's why uh, they they create a hierarchy, moral hierarchy uh, between themselves and the other other nations, and that is that is the reason why they would not. Uh, look at themselves and engage in a self-critic, engage in a self-critic when it comes to their own uh, record. Uh, so, uh, although uh, although it would be quite ideal, I don't expect such a such a thing from the United States. All right, gentlemen. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.